Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Dr. Barry Castleman, who is an international expert on asbestos and well known throughout the world. Barry has been with us in the past. Barry, good to have you with us again. Pleasure. Barry, you have been here earlier. What is different this time? For instance, we had the protest in Vaishali. Do you think there is much more public awareness now that you see? Well, it's, it's a long process. Public awareness takes time to develop. Uh, it, it takes a very long time to inform the general population about the dangers of something as insidious as asbestos, which has such a long delayed effect before it causes its grievous harm. Uh, but uh, you know, there are some signs of progress. There are companies in India that are now uh, starting to use poly plastic or polymer fibers as a substitute for asbestos. Uh, uh, at least one company, Everest, has a, a line they make asbestos cement products as well, but they also now have developed a line making these products with polypropylene fibers what? using a process from Brazil. What are the dangers associated with asbestos? Why are we fighting it? Well, the problem is that the, the dust, asbestos is a mineral fiber. Uh, it's mined in uh, mostly, it's supplied by Russia, Kazakhstan, and Brazil uh, to the countries of the world that still use it. And the dangers are, are from breathing the dust of uh, the asbestos and handling it that when you're making products if you have asbestos cement roofing and you take a power saw to cut the piece of roofing you get very high levels of uh, airborne dust exposure and uh, breathing this dust can cause a lung scarring disease called asbestosis which was medically well understood by 1930 and uh, can be a totally disabling or fatal disease or cancer which was well recognized lung cancer as an asbestos disease by 1950. And yet uh, uh, the use of asbestos has still kept going up. Uh, there was no real regulation of asbestos in the world and no significant regulation until the 1970s. And at that point things started turning around. Uh, at that point uh, the peak use of asbestos in the United States was in 1973, in Europe a little bit later. and. Uh, but then the companies started seeing the developing world as the, the future. And so they started scaling up their operations in, in Brazil and in India and in other countries. And so those are now the main, the main markets for asbestos in the world. How many countries have banned asbestos and which are the countries where you think the asbestos usage is still going up or still is very high? Well, the, uh, the bans are all over Europe. There are over 50 countries that have banned asbestos. Also, South Africa, South Korea, Japan, uh, Australia, um, a number of countries in the southern part of South America, uh, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, uh, parts of Brazil. Brazil, it's, it's been a pitched battle, and the uh, uh, federal government hasn't moved on the issue, so the states have moved ahead, and this is what I think needs to happen in India. But the uh, individual states uh, like Bihar and Kerala uh, maybe should consider banning asbestos on their own. International labor organization, WHO, all have issued guidelines or reports against the use of asbestos. Yes, they have. In, in 2006, uh, both the ILO and the WHO said that asbestos should be banned everywhere in the world, that new asbestos products should not be used. 90% of all the asbestos used is in construction materials asbestos cement sheets and pipes, mostly the gray corrugated roofs you see all over, cement looking roofs, they're asbestos cement. And they can be made with either non-asbestos fibers with polymeric fibers like I was mentioning in cellulose, or there are totally different materials that can replace them like clay for roofing or metals. Or, or tiles for or instance, tiles, clay tiles. Or micro concrete tiles, there are lots of things that can be used, same with the pipes. Uh, the asbestos cement pipes can be replaced by um, ductile iron pipes or, or clay pipes or plastic pipes of various types. There are reports again of what are the substitutes available for asbestos and lots of substitutes for each kind of asbestos use has been shown. So there is really no specific reason to use asbestos except that it is economically 
cheaper in certain right. cases. Right. But just by way of a last uh, mention about the substitutes, there, uh, I've I've been a consultant to the to the World Bank, and uh, they they asked me to assemble a report on substitutes for asbestos. And so this is a, called a good practices note on asbestos. If you Google World Bank asbestos, this is the first thing that pops up. And so this basically says you shouldn't use asbestos in new construction. And if you have to disturb asbestos materials in existing construction, like renovation of schools in the Ukraine or some other big World Bank infrastructure project, that they have to follow strict international guidelines for controlling the dust, limiting the exposure, uh, bagging the wastes, protecting the workers and training the workers that are going to do the work. And so there are standardized methods for these kinds of things. And so uh, that was the World Bank. And then the uh, World Health Organization also asked me to uh, write a report on uh, alternatives to asbestos in construction materials. And they've published that within the last couple of months in a uh, report of a conference that they held in, in uh, uh, Europe last year. And so I was attending conferences as a World, Bank cons World Health Organization consultant. And uh, we handed out this report on substitutes for asbestos at that meeting. And so now that's available on the website of the World Health Organization. Barry, the question still remains that what is the cost differential between using this kind of materials and using asbestos? And the, is the initial cost and the life cycle cost. Can you talk something about that? The cost difference is small. The initial cost advantage that the asbestos products have over the uh, fiber cements made with uh, polymer fibers and cellulose is about 10 percent. That's what people tell me from Brazil where they're using polyvinyl alcohol fibers. Uh, I mean in uh, South Africa where they're using PVA and in Brazil where they're using polypropylene. So there are about 10 percent increased uh, cost of production using these, these other fibers. But you're not going to have the problem of uh, uh, managing buildings where uh, every time you have to do repairs you, you, you need to protect the workers or have a cancer hazard to the workers and the people who occupy the buildings. And uh, in the end of the life cycle is the demolition cost and Brazilian economists have determined that whatever price advantage the asbestos products have in the initial cost is more than offset by the cost of disposing of the waste when the building has to be demolished disposing of the asbestos cement waste as hazardous waste, which is now required in Brazil. So uh, it may not be required here in India today, but these buildings are going to be around a long time. And uh, so you have to consider that very possible cost on down the road in terms of uh, management of these buildings, the maintenance of the buildings, and the de demolition of the buildings. So even in terms of cost, this 10 percent is really a very small amount of difference to pay for the long-term costs of this kind that you're talking about, particularly in maintenance, which also exposes the people occupying these buildings, people who would be passing by, and so on. Right. So if you take all this cost into account, this 10 percent seems to be a very small cost. It is. In so, Thailand, uh, they calculated, uh, they, they determined that the cost of building a townhouse was uh, $65 more with an asbestos-free roof than with an asbestos cement roof. That's uh, a little over 3,000 rupees. For a, for a, for a building a townhouse, for a building. it was one half of one percent of the cost of building the structure. Trivial. So what it amounts to is lack of knowledge of the people who are using asbestos and the lobbies that are promoting asbestos who seem to have a lot of clout in the government and other places. Right. You're basically dealing with the fact that uh, people are unaware of the danger Unfortunately, in India, there's practically no government regulation of the asbestos industry or the construction industry when it comes to things like this. And, uh, uh, and we're dealing with what's basically a criminal industry. This is an industry, I mean, the World Health Organization estimates that 107,000 people a year die in the world every year from cancers related to asbestos, from occupational exposure. And then there are the non-occupational cancers, the household cases, the neighborhood cases in addition to that. And uh, so this is an industry that understands with all these countries banning asbestos that they're going to, their profit margin depends on avoiding two things, the cost of prevention and compensation. And as long as they don't have to spend money warning people, uh, lost, lost markets telling people the products can cause cancer, as long as they don't have any government regulation to deal with, 
And as long as they don't have to compensate the people that get sick as a result of their negligence, they can make money. And so you're dealing with some very ruthless business people. Uh, there are no multinational asbestos companies left in the world. They all, the last one ended in 1999 uh, in a company that decided to convert to the polypropylene process in Brazil. And so, uh, uh, but so now we're dealing with the bottom dwellers of the corporate food chain. We're dealing with the national companies that are willing to keep on making asbestos products and keep on trying to make money for a few more years before there's a ban. And they're leaving this horrible legacy of all these structures that are going to be around for the rest of the century for people to live in, work in, repair, uh, renovate, and demolish eventually, all with the, the constant danger of the dust. As long as they can make their immediate killing right now, they don't really care who gets killed later. That would be the what these companies are dealing with. That's what we're. That's that's exactly true. And the, just by way of illustrating the criminality of this, there was a criminal trial that was decided this year, uh, in February 2012. A criminal court in Italy sentenced a multi-billionaire asbestos executive and factory owner, Stefan schmidt heine from Switzerland, to 16 years in jail for having operated uh, asbestos cement factories all over, four of them in Italy, and plants all over Europe, even in South America and South Africa. Uh, but mainly they were focused on the ones in Italy, causing what, what, what the court called an environmental disaster, uh, resulting in the deaths of, so far, 3,000 Italian people. Barry, unfortunately, as you know, in the Bhopal case, we have had Warren Anderson and the other people responsible for the disaster killed thousands again, being left scot-free. So we really have to wait for the law, the judiciary and the people to catch up with those who are involved in environmental crime. Thank you very much, Barry. It's been very pleasant having you with us. Hope to see you again next time you're here. Thanks, Pavia. Thank you.